So today, we're talking sound. Specifically, we're talking about the Behringer Xenix 802 USB. Stay tuned. And here we are. We're back. We're talking about budget studio equipment, the stuff that I'm using in particular. And we're going to discuss this little gem today. The Xenix Q802 USB by Behringer. And uh, I've been using it now for a few weeks. And uh, I'm more than happy with uh, the capabilities of the mixing board and what it can do. Uh, by st I want to start off this video. There's multiple videos about this mixing board. There is a part in this video that is very unique to mine. I want you to stay tuned for that. Uh, let's talk about some of the pros. The, the preamps on this thing are very, very clean. Um, very little hiss or overhead. Um, and even if you have preamps that do have a little, uh, by the time you upload a video to YouTube or other places, um, it's kind of tough to tell uh, if you're getting any noise from the preamps. Um, but once you use this and you use it on this side of the screen, excuse me, uh, when they say clean preamps, you'll be able to, t to tell uh, exactly what they're talking about and these are clean and for sub 100 bucks I mean you can't beat it um, ease of use you plug it in you turn on the phantom power if you're using a mic like this and it's everything on it is straightforward um, with one exception and we're gonna get to that um, and it's small if you were in some type of uh, situation where you had to move around a lot you could do it with this and then you're not gonna have to uh, spend hours packing things up I mean it's uh, 9 inches by 11 or 12 inches I, I think is what the specs say it's not that big uh, like my laptop is right here the soundboards right here and they sit side by side um, it doesn't take up a lot of room uh, some of the cons, uh, Behringer, if you're listening, excuse me, you can't tell me it takes that much effort or money to put a power button and on off switch on this mixing board. Uh, the only way that you can get rid of the, the power is to unplug it. Um, even being a budget piece of equipment, there should be an on off switch. Enough, to, enough said about the, uh, the on-off switch. Um, on all the videos that are out there by other YouTubers and people that do uh, equipment reviews, they talk about how it doesn't sit level. And mine, sure enough, does not sit level. Uh, overall construction of this is very well. It's sturdy, but it does not sit level. And again, Behringer, if you're watching, if you put some type of flexible rubber feet on it, you would be able to take that away. So please do. Uh, I don't have a lot going on around me as I'm shooting videos, but if you were in a place where you were using that and there were a lot of people moving around or whatnot, somebody bumped it, um, it's going. To, you're going to hear that. So that being said. Uh, the last con, and I'm going to say it's a con, is the way you have to do a mix minus. Um, the um, mixing board itself uh, is sort of like a one way where some of the higher end uh, mixing boards, the sound is back and forth through the board. And if you set this up, to take like Skype phone calls or whatnot, you can't monitor the audio straight away. You can't there, but there's a there's a hack or like a workaround. You hate to call it a hack uh, that Ray Ortega does, 
and if you watch his videos I highly recommend this uh, solution because there are others out there and if you try some of the other ways you're going to get some crazy feedback sometimes through your uh, headphones and in lieu of saving the mixing board and your hearing I would stick with the way that Ray Ortega does it I'm just saying uh, but it can be uh, worked around um, so the last thing I want to touch on is uh, the phantom power button uh, if you watch a lot of the other videos um, they'll talk about how you turn the phantom power on the light lights up that you got the 48 volts but then when you turn it off the light stays on you can't get it to shut off and that's kind of true and here's what I want to show you if you look at this clip it's off I turn the phantom power on it says it's lit up 48 volts I turn it off and it stays on but now continue watching and I learned this because I was messing with it I and this was a couple weeks ago I shut it off left the room went got a cup of coffee let the dogs out whatnot by the time I come back the light was off and I'm thinking to myself now I know I was just messing with that and uh, but the light was off so I got to messing with it a little bit more and even if you hit the power turn it back off that 48 volt will stay lit for a while it does eventually go out as you're gonna see in this video clip here even if you unplug it the main power light will go out but that plus 48 volt you can see it's starting to get dim now will continue to stay lit until whatever has to power up in there discharges now I've emailed Behringer and I haven't heard back yet but I'm kinda interested in how that works because uh, you would think you would just shut it off and it would unpower also what I've noticed is if you turn it off while you're waiting for it to power down and you start talking into your mic and you and you're recording as that light fades out so does the sound so whatever is inside that that powers up uh, as it discharges um, you can still use the mic but the sound will fade off as well and I have no idea I, I don't know that much about electronics to tell you the why but uh, when they say that the power button doesn't go off it will eventually um, like I said I don't know how all that works but that power button when you when you press it it will shut off eventually <laughs> so but that's that's what I know so far um, anyway that's it that's my review of the 802 USB um, I'm gonna give it an eight and a half out of ten uh, I would love to give it a 10 out of 10 but there's just some minor and I mean minor things that should at some point Behringer if you're listening be taken care of it shouldn't rock it should have a power button and man if you would throw in the ability to monitor the audio on a mix minus man for less than a hundred bucks you would be king especially with the clean preamps so that's all I have on this stay tuned as we continue to uh, go through the different equipment that I have um, the last video that I do in this kind of series is I'm gonna give you a breakdown on price and what I paid um, and kind of to show if you're you don't have to buy that super duper top-end stuff to actually make decent video and have good sound so that's what I've got until next time stay sharp keep a tight shot group and rock on